Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Rise Up For You Workplace Solution Podcast. My name is Netalina Nasserdeen, and I am the founder and CEO of Rise Up For You. Super excited to be here again for another fantastic episode with Andrew Binns. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, Netta. Thanks very much for the invitation. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So I always love to start the episode off by having our guests brag about themselves. So please tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, and brag it all up. (laughs) So uh, I have um, uh, run for a number of years a a small innovation consultancy. We work with senior leaders seeking to bring innovation inside large corporates. Uh, And uh, I, I, I created this business 15 years ago with uh, two business school professors, Mike Tushman from Harvard, Charles O'Reilly from Stanford. Uh, And together we've written a book, uh, Corporate Explorer, which kind of summarizes what we've learned and seeks to inspire leaders inside corporations to innovate. Yeah, and I love that. And um, obviously, as you know, and I'm sure your audience as well, that this topic is really critical right now, especially after the last two years of what we've gone through globally with the pandemic is, how do we innovate? How do we adapt? How do we pivot? How do we stand out and, and really put our thinking caps on to grow companies and businesses? Now, I think you, you, you're exactly right. This, you know, we used to argue about disruption. Does it apply to us? Do things really change that fast? And we've learned in the last two years, yes, things really do change that fast. And so, you know, you can... You can uh, wait until leaders have a uh, a corporate grand plan or strategy to do this, or as an individual, you can take on the charge of being an innovator. And and our message in this book is really all that about empowerment. Is saying yeah. we know that there are many entrepreneurs out there who do fabulous work creating new ventures, but the unsung heroes in innovation are actually those who do it from inside corporations, something that we think can't be done. But but the stories in our book show that it can. Uh, it can be hard. Uh, sometimes it doesn't succeed, but it's possible. So I want to dive into this a little bit more because I'm just, I'm thinking as a business owner myself, mm. it has a team and at the company Rise Up For You, we work with corporations all the time globally. And one of the common denominators that I hear quite often from executives and even myself as a complaint is the art of critical thinking, which is part of mm-hmm. innovation, mm-hmm. right? Good. So getting into a space where you're not just being told what to do and then you take action, yeah. but as an individual, yes. really feeling empowered to have ideas to think of ideas, to be interested in creating ideas. And I know, again, from leaders that I've spoken to, and even myself, I see this skill less and less and less. So I would love to know, uh, how do we inspire this innovative mindset? Yeah, yeah. So so the the um, let me tell you a story uh, about one of the leaders that we talk about in the book, because he inspired me, honestly, to write this book. And I've been doing this work for many years um, and, and seen many uh, people be successful. But there was something about this individual which really struck me. And his name's Christian Kurtish. He's in Hungary uh, and, um, you know, perhaps an unfashionable place to find great innovation. But uh, and, and Christian was the manager of the Hungarian business of this European insurance company called Unica. And so this is a multi-billion dollar operation, 27 countries, 10 million customers. And he's running this little business in Hungary. And he comes up with the idea of how do we disrupt not just his business, but the whole insurance industry. He says it's lost its soul. It's lost its reason to be, which used to be about risk sharing communities, people pooling their risk so that they would um, be able to sustain themselves in periods of of, of great loss or, or, or trauma. And, and he says, we can recreate a risk-sharing community. Now, nobody asked Christian to do this. Nobody said, hey, Christian, we need you to spend a few years changing your life to transform the business. He had the insight. And then he worked himself to build a case that was both logical in that it was good fact-based, good analysis of opportunity, but it was also emotional, deeply passionate about what he was doing. And he got it in front of the CEO 
over a period of time, got to the CEO and, and the CEO was so struck with what he had to say. He said, this is like putting a hand grenade underneath the insurance industry. And if they didn't act, somebody was going to um, take their business out in time. And so he felt compelled to at least get started on this road. And now it's scaling uh, across yeah. Europe as a business. So what would you say, you know, like as a leader listening to that, and again, as some of the leaders that are trying to help their team think this way, are there any strategies that we can yeah. just try to empower, implement, yeah. and, and try to really encourage people to, to think on a different level? Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I want to give you three. The, the first one is I want, I, I want, a, I want an ambition. I want a, an ambition that is equal to the scale of the opportunity or the threat of disruption. And that gives a license to corporate explorers to do their work. Secondly, I want you to apply some, some good innovation disciplines. I want to ideate, incubate, and scale uh, um, ways of realizing that ambition. Uh, and those are learnable skills. Anybody can pick up our book or, or thousands of others that have been written about how to, how to do this. Um, and, and the third thing is I want you to understand that um, these corporate explorers are leading change. They're they're running against the grain of an established organization, even one uh, like your own. I, I, I'm assuming that you're you're in the in the tens of people, not the hundreds of people within your organization. Yes. I know I am in mine, and, but but even in my organization, we have established ways of doing things. We we know how we serve our clients, and if we're going to do something that is different, that means relearning. It's it, it's uncomfortable. Uh, yeah. And so we've got to see these people as leaders of change as well as innovators. And on the flip side, because sometimes, you know, as a leader, you're in the trenches, you're running the business, you've got a lot going yeah. on. Um, how do we identify some of these corporate explorers? Like, is there anything that we can be looking for for team members that yeah. are maybe a little bit more innovative, but we just yeah. can't see them? Maybe we're not paying attention or we don't yeah. realize that they have something genius. And, and, and they're a little bit unlikely. Right, because they're not the high ego, high attention. I've got an idea types. Actually, when you look at Christian Curtis or another uh, leader we talk about in the book, Sarah uh, Cavallo from 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 Bosch, or um, uh, another uh, woman who I find very inspiring, it isn't in the book, but but we because we learned about her afterwards, uh, Yoki Matsuoka uh, at, at Panasonic. Um, they're humble. These are not attention seekers. Where their secret comes is they're passionate about solving a customer problem. And so if you hear somebody talking about, I see something wrong in our industry that I want to solve, and I'm curious about how we could do it differently. And they're more interested in that sort of outside in reference point. How do I do something in the world than about attention for themselves? Then they may well have that, that, uh, that, that explorer um, uh, gene, as it were. And not everybody has it, right? There, there's definitely a difference. Those who are really good at stability and at operations and at generating predictable results. That is a fantastic thing that every business needs. But you just need to balance it by giving yeah. the space, the autonomy for the explorers as well. Do you think we are losing a little bit of this or do you think that we're actually accelerating? I mean, I know we hear a lot of stereotypes like with the new generation that yeah. they're not yeah. as you know uh, quick on their feet. They don't have as many ideas. I tend to think it's the opposite, but I'm just curious. I totally in, it's the opposite. I think there's yeah. actually a crisis for corporations. The book, the book is empowering. We have this highly provocative subtitle, you know, how corporations beat startups at the innovation game. Yeah. And and we say this, but let's be honest, this is a crisis for corporations. And the, the great resignation has really oh, yeah. showed us that this is the case, right? And and you know what, uh, Neda, that, that, that the great resignation has gone side by side with, uh, I think it's a fourfold increase in the number of new businesses being registered in the United States, according to the US Census Bureau. So what you have is a lot of people leaving companies and going to create new ventures. Why yeah. can't we realize some of those entrepreneurial aspirations inside the company? That's really, I think, the point. And I think there's there's plenty of potential in new generations and, and even in some of our older folks as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love that. Andrew, thank you so much for sharing with us. I'd love to actually jump into the power section of the interview. Oh, so I'm just very good. Ask, oh, I know. <laughs> I know. No, no, I, I asked you a couple oh. quick 
a couple quick fire questions and some, you know, uh, small responses back. So my first question to you is we always like to ask if, you know, today were your last day on earth, what's a golden nugget that you would love to leave with the world? I don't wait to be asked. Do awesome. it. Awesome. And we're really big on values here at Rise Up For You. So I would love to know what is one value that's an absolute non-negotiable for you? Humility. Humility. I'm not, the smart, I'm not the smartest person in the room. My clients are smarter than me. And all I can do is help them go faster at what they need to get done. Yeah. And I have two more questions for you. But before I ask the last one, um, how do we learn more about you? Tell us a little bit about your book. Can we connect with you on LinkedIn? Yeah. Very much so. Um, uh, AJM Bins uh, at AJM Bins is my uh, uh, Twitter handle, and I think the LinkedIn Andrew J M Bins uh, on LinkedIn. Please do love to uh, have new people to connect with. The book is uh, Corporate Explorer. The website is thecorporateexplorer.com. Uh, um, and then uh, our business is Change Logic. Um, so fantastic. Thank you, Andrew. So please, everybody, make sure you connect with Andrew on all social platforms. Check out the website. And my final question for you is, as you know, we are Rise Up For You. What mm. comes to mind when you hear that phrase? Yes. So it, it is this thing of, of, of self-empowerment. You know, with, there's so much looking for other people for reasons why you can't do things. In, in, in our work, it's, oh, it's the senior team's problem. It's a CEO's issue. They need people who stand up or rise up for themselves and, and empower those around them. Because one of the things I find of these corporate explorers is that when they do that, the people in the company, when they do it well, without arrogance, with humility, they empower others and they are beloved because of what they bring uh, from uh, in, in the workplace. Absolutely. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us today. It has been such an honor to have you. Well, it's delightful to be here with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in, whether you're listening to the podcast or watching us on YouTube or LinkedIn. It's always an honor to be here and bring fabulous guests to you to help provide workplace solutions, empowerment, strategies that you can use every day in your business and in the workplace. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you on the next episode.